Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And this is just kind of like a little introductory uh, message here of what I hope to bring out for you guys on Sunday. Uh, we have been working on bringing out some of the more perfect ways, we might call it, on how God is going to restore His Word, kind of like what the two witnesses will actually be bringing out to us in the very near future when they come. Because remember, uh, Yeshua made the statement that when they asked Him, doesn't the Scripture say that Elias must first come? Or the scribes said that Elias must first come, which is Elijah, Greek for Elijah. And Yeshua answered and said, Truly, Elijah shall first come and restore all things. And uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting in the fact because Yeshua himself was the restorer of the Word of God. And we've been using some of the other books as well that, uh, that have not made it into the canon to, to show some of the prophetic side. Now, some people have been kind of a little bit edgy in the fact that we've used this as well as uh, speaking about animals and uh, especially recently as we saw that God's love for animals is very important and some of the things we see in our own Bible, you know, like Jeremiah uh, chapter 7, verse 22, where he speaks about that God never commanded Moses in the beginning about offering sacrifices. We have places where Yeshua speaks of it in the book of Matthew and many things such as this. And it's caused a great stir because uh, especially if we use a book that is not part of the actual canon. And so we, we're working on putting together a message for you so you understand our stance on this. One of the things, just kind of briefly kind of give you a little background on this, is that I'm looking at the prophetic nature of s several of these books here. That's including even Adam and Eve, the Essene Humane Gospel of Yeshua. And by the way, there's different versions of the Essene Gospel. There's one called the Nazarene, etc. And I cannot authenticate these books here. What I'm gleaning from are things that are very clearly prophetic or things that actually match our Bible, especially where there are things that are questions. And this is what we're trying to do. We're not trying to give you some new type of gospel or something of that nature there, but we're trying to, to look at what God has promised in our own Bible, our own canon, what is going to be in the millennium. And so therefore, we're trying to show you that more excellent way. Uh, not that we're trying to tell you that you must do this or you must do that, you know, that's up to you. We're all here on a free moral agent, and we have a right to choose one way or the other. We see that God did allow the eating of flesh for the children of Israel in the wilderness journey, but it wasn't what he wanted them to do. In fact, we find out in the book of Numbers, it says, While the meat was yet between their teeth, the wrath of God burned against the children of Israel, and he smote them with a grievous plague. Uh, this was because God was trying to get them in, in the way back to the way he did it in the Garden of Eden because he was wanting a full restoration to bring us back where we started from. But as we're showing these things, there's been some people that have taken this wrong. Now, most of you that have not quite understood what our objective is have, have been kind enough with your love for us. You wrote us privately asking about these things. But there have been some that rather than contacting me, as the scripture would say, if you have something against your brother, go to him, ask him in private what it is. But instead, there's been some people that have actually made these things public and have gone around to defame uh, uh, our, our reputation that we're trying to keep pure before the Lord. And even when we took privately and approached them, they refused, but continually made these things public, especially on my wife's Facebook page. When, when they made it public, she addressed it publicly because the people refused to do it the right way. Uh, but anyway, there's one particular scripture that has been quoted, especially in this case here, that I wanted to share with you uh, because we have been accused of being spreading the doctrines of devils because of our desire to be uh, to 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 choose a pure life that honors the life of an animal. And by the way, we've been accused uh, now that because we have stood for the animals, that, well, the Danoon Institute doesn't, they don't speak anything about abortion. Well, there's 
a, a lot of videos out there. And if you only look, there are videos where we speak about that as well in the sensitivity of abortion, where we have spoken directly to the mothers that have aborted their children to show them that there is mercy. God will forgive for these things. But the act itself, taking of the life, you're living in an age of what they call Laodicea, which is people's rights. People are demanding their rights. That's why we have homosexuality. That's how abortion got brought in. But then again, then you have the doctors who are murderers in this case. Yes, we have spoke on this subject before, but I've also tried to keep in mind many sisters that listen to this ministry have gone through these very same things in their own life. They needed to know that God does forgive them. And we have tried to deal with this in a sensitive way for their sake as well, not just to bash people. Uh, and it's the same thing when it comes to animals. Our desire is not to, to bring about a heavy burden or guilt upon people. Many of us just did not know how God loves His creation, His animals. And we've assumed, just as I have, that many of these passages, like the one I'm going to share with you here in 1 Timothy, we take it for the literal way we're reading it, not, not taking into account that how was it translated? It's the same thing with this issue of women. And many of the sisters that came against us really hard on this forget that it was from mistranslations that we were able to show these sisters that God had freed you. You weren't under bondage, just as Yeshua brought this to, to being. Anyway, let's get right into this, and I just want to share a few things with you, but this is one that we, have, we, we were accused of, uh, but if you knew what is really written here, it'll make you think differently, especially after we share. Let me read it to you the way it's written in King James. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, not during their time, but in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is why we got accused of being devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Hmm. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it received with thanksgiving. Well, this is what's interesting. Two particular words here. One is creature that we find in verse 4. And then the word meets that we find up here in uh, verse 3. Do you realize that both of these words in the Greek language do not mean what you have translated here in English? But you have to remember, when Constantine got together with the different priests of his day in order to compile the first Bible. And by the way, that oldest manuscript of the Bible, I forget what it is, is either 1,400 differences compared to that one and the one we have today, or it's 14,000 differences. I forget which one it is. I think it's 1,400 things, are, 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 are uh, the writings of the English are that different compared to what is written today. All right, but let's just take a look and see what is actually written here in the original Greek language. The word here for meat, or meats in this case, in verse 3, in the Greek language is uh, from the word bromoton. And literally, it means foods. It has nothing to do with meat, nothing to do with basar, as we would say in the Hebrew language, nothing to do with flesh whatsoever. It's just food. Well, some might say, well, they figured that out because he says in verse 4, for every creature of God. Another mistranslation that they did in the English language. But yet, in order to fool the people so that they would think it's okay to rise up and kill and eat. See? You know, for one, when you think about that, kill and eat. If God said, thou shalt not kill, how could you kill in the first place? Just a thought to think about. But anyway... And it could be more symbolic. And by the way, when you look at that verse 2 about where with Peter, with the vision, it's not just unclean beasts. It's all manner of four-footed beasts, both clean and unclean. 
Peter never ate of meat, is what he was saying. And what's more interesting as well, in the homilies, Peter actually writes he was a vegetarian. And we're going to get into a lot of these things because I want to show you some of the historical side of this as well. But let's look here. Verse 4, for every creature, well, the word here, according to Strong's, is kitzma. And kitzma, by the way, means created thing, not creatures not animals. It doesn't even imply animals. It's created things. Let's take a look at the way then the scripture should read here if it were translated correctly in the English language. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. By the way, which God created... We're going to look and see what foods God created in just a moment. But let's finish up. For every created thing of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. You see, it has nothing to do with meats in the first place. But what is it? In today that you're living in, because the, 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 it has been such a huge thing, Meat eating is, 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 is a bigger thing today than it has ever been in all the history of man. In fact, of course, like I said, some people don't like the Essene gospel. Yeshua said the cruelty that would be done to animals will be done in, a, in the age that was to come like no other age there ever was will be that cruelty to animals. And that's very true. And what's happening in this day. In fact, he said it'd be more so even than what was in the time of the temple in the sacrificial service, and it is. We see clearly in the slaughterhouses worldwide the death and cruelty to animals is like, like unknown of any other age. So, what is he saying here? He says that the, the speaking lies and hypocrisy is having their conscience seared with a rod of iron. Their conscience. Why would he speak of your conscience to begin with? See? Because, he says, for they will be forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods. Forbidding to marry? That's the way the age is now. Today, they don't want to get married. They say, let's remain single. Let's just live together. See, they forbid to marry. Don't get married. Stay single. And because they abstain from foods... What is this about the food that God created? We don't want that. We got all we got our fried chicken. We got our barbecues. See, watch what he watch what he says. To abstain from uh, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. Let's see what God created that was to be partaken of with thanksgiving. In Genesis chapter 1. Verse 29, then God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, every created thing, like in verse 4, see, and every tree which is fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. Now they say you're a nutcase. If you believe, if you're turning back to the way that God prescribed in the beginning. And then he says here, after he commands what the food would be for Adam and Eve, and, and this wasn't just for Adam and Eve. This was going to be for all the children after Adam and Eve. This is why God says to, to the children of Israel, when they're going from Egypt, he says, I'll, you know, taking them to a land flowing with milk and honey. You know what's funny? My wife brought this up today. It's a good point. I never thought about this before. She said, you know... If they were starving to death and they were complaining, they had no water and they were starving, why didn't they just eat the cattle to begin with? Then they wouldn't have been hungry. They had all kinds of flocks and herds with them. But you see, God had said, you're going to a land flowing with milk and honey. By the way, and we'll go into this later this week on Sunday, I'll try to bring this out for you. Historically speaking, there was a group of the Jewish people that lived in Egypt during the time here that also had a temple 
built almost exactly as what we had in Jerusalem during the first and second temple period, but they never believed in offering animal sacrifices. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but that's just a little interesting thought for you. But notice when God, when he, he saw they were hungry, he rained manna from heaven for them. That was their food. And of course, and they began to, to get angry and they said, we remember the, the melons and the fish and the garlic and the herbs that we had back in Egypt. And God never got angry over them, over the melons or the garlic or any of that. But he got angry, and he says, because of their lust for blood. Remember, as I said to you in the book of Numbers, when he gave them the birds and they were gathering them all up and everything, See, it was a permissive will of God, but God was angry because they were willing to do it. And while the flesh was between their teeth, the Bible says he smote them with a plague because he was angry with them. You see, what, the only thing that we're trying to say, and there's no doubt, God, God is a merciful God. He is certainly forgiving. Many of us never knew these things. I didn't know it. I was a hunter and everything for many years. I had no idea. But as I'm seeing, for one, we realize that we're looking at the Bible, and the Bible speaks about that the time will come when we go back to, to, to the paradise, back to the way God has taken us. Nothing shall hurt nor destroy in all of this holy mountain. The lion and the lamb will lay down together and feed together. So if nothing shall hurt nor destroy, we certainly will not be killing animals and cooking them. God is restoring his paradise to the way it was. And so actually we find out here in Timothy that he's saying, forbidding Mary and commanding to abstain from food. What food? Food which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving. And Genesis tells us what food that was. Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth and every tree which has fruit yielded, yielding seed. So it has to be fruit and vegetation that has seeds. See, like in America, what is it? Satan is really on an agenda, especially in the United States. They have made everything seedless, seedless watermelons. They, everything is GMO. What is it? Satan is trying to kill what God intended for you to have. Because he knows that many of you are waking up. And in fact, in Germany, it is a proven fact in Germany, statistically, 4,000 people a day are becoming vegetarians. Now, I can't say that's because of the gospel or anything, but one thing is, it's better for a lifestyle. In fact, almost all diseases and everything else come from eating of flesh. Remember God plagued Israel for the quail? So... As I say, though, I'm not, we're not trying to put this on you guys. We love you. If you choose to eat meat, I'd love you just the same. It, I would not change my, my heart for you or my love for you. You know, it, this is a personal decision we've made. But I must share with you what the Word of God says on it so that you can make your own decision as well. And many of you have written us and have told us that because of these things, you as well have chosen to take that more excellent way. And that's what we're trying to share with you. Let me just share. Let's finish this up, though. So, so we see that he created. What he created, the foods which he had created, and were the plants and the fruit trees that yield their seed. Seed to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God, not creature, but every created thing, which was what? The trees and the plants with yield, seed yielding. Every created thing of God is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. That's what God was saying. That's what he said in the original Greek language. He didn't say something different. He said exactly what I'm sharing with you now. And let me take, I want to just share with you something. This is just, just to show you God's love as well. Because I, I was telling my wife today, I said, do you realize that if we take an animal's life, do you realize how many commandments of God we break? Now, I, I think I told her four, but I can only remember three when she, she asked me a little bit later today. She says, how many was that again? I said, well, thou shalt not kill. We break that commandment. Another one we break is thou shalt not covet. We wanted, we wanted it, we coveted it, and we break thou shalt not covet. And as well... Um, 
Here we go. Oh, gosh, now I'm forgetting what the third one was. So um, I, I forget it now. But let, let, me, let me take you over here to Psalms here. Um, I want to just share this with you. This is just really beautiful. These were uh, some passages my wife found here today and was sharing with me. And uh, I've read these before, but uh, uh, we actually, by the way, when we take the life of an animal, we rob God of his praise. Did you know that? I did not even realize. I, I, I knew that here recently, but I didn't know that at the time. Anyway, let's, I want to take you first to Psalm 148. That's where we're going to go first. And we're going to go to Psalm 150, verse 6. And then we're going to go to back to Psalm 104. Verse Psalm 148. And I'm going to read to you verses 1 to 13. Praise ye the Lord. Praise you the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise you him all his angels. Praise you him all the host. Praise you him sun and moon. Praise him all the stars of light. Praise him yea heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow, vapors and stormy and fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all the people's princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maiden and old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Did you notice that even the animals you know, it reminded me of a precious sister that went on to be with the Lord that shared with me when she, when the Lord took her beyond that curtain of time and she saw the rocks praising the Lord, the trees beating their leaves together, worshiping the Lord. All creation, the animals worship the Lord. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Animals have breath. You know, there's another scripture, and I forget where it's at, but even the fish of the sea. Well, it's actually even right here, I believe it was. We had it right there where it says the, uh, uh, yes, and you waters that be above the, wait a minute, let them praise the name of the Lord. He, uh, oh gosh, I forget where it was at now. But anyway, there, there is a scripture that speaks about the fish in the sea that praise the Lord. Okay, let's run real quick to Psalm 104. And I have it marked, so I'm hoping it's one that I wanted to share with you as well. And um, 104, verse 14. He caused the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the uh, service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthened man's heart, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, and the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nest. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon uh, or, uh, for seasons, and the sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, it, uh, it is night, wherein all beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar uh, after their prey and seek their meat from God. See, now notice that. As it says here, he tells us what our own, our own food source was. See, for us. For he causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man. And he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man. See, and the oil as well, olive oil, etc. And, and we're going to, I want to, I just want to show you some of the historical things. What you choose to do is strictly up to you guys. As we said, we're not here trying to put something on you. But I do, I, see what you don't understand. The Lord has been dealing with me heavily on when Moses and Elijah come, they're coming with restoration. And the Lord has been showing me those things, just like with women and the things where Paul said, if, if, you know, though an angel 
or, or, or he said, though one of us or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than that which I have preached unto you, let him be accursed. See, Paul knew that his words were going to be changed. In the Essene gospel, Yeshua says that his words would be changed as well. That they would hide what he said. They would try to hide it from the people. In fact, you would be amazed at how many prophecies. And, and, and we have them even in our own uh, Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, and I've actually been sitting there doing a, a deep study on it and taking and lie, laying in there the different prophecies that are there and laying them out so you can see them in our Bible as well, how they correspond. The only difference that we have in that particular gospel is we get a little bit more depth. Some people have written me, though, and I will say this, because some people have written me that says some of the things bother them about this scene. There's one they were saying that, they, that it doesn't believe in the virgin birth. Now, just so you're aware of this, the scenes were divided on that, and there's actually two versions of that. One does believe in the virgin birth, and the other one believed that it was still a great miracle of God, but it was that God had overshadowed both of them. You know, I, I, I can't, like I said, I don't say, I can't necessarily say that I agree with everything I see written there, but there again, even the, the, the mistakes that we see that were made in our own Bible, we're searching to find what the truth is. And some people say, well, you know, they speak about Mother Earth, you know. It, I don't say go worship the earth, but I will tell you this. Mother Earth is written in our own Bible if you look at it. God said, let the earth bring forth the yielding seed. See, it was like the mother bringing forth. Yes, so we have these things. And even there was one thing that kind of threw me off a little bit at first, and that was where he spoke about the angel of the air and the angel of the sun, things like that, only to find out in the book of Hosea it speaks of the angel of the air. In Hebrew, you see it plain as day. It says, when the angel of the air would embrace you, you shall be embarrassed for your sacrifices. So, you know, so these things are there. And, and like I say, I can't ascribe to all of it. I, I don't say, I don't know what the original Hebrew says. I know it's there. I haven't been able to see it myself. I haven't been able to get a copy of that to see how the translation was done because that's something that I do. I've been studying the, the Hebraic language for more than 30 years. I've studied the Gospels of Yeshua for more than 30 years. So I know by God's grace what I'm trying to tell you, but what I want is I want to look deeper, especially as the closing hours of humanity are here. You know, we want to know what the truth is. And when we see prophetic things written there, you know, we, we take it carefully. Let me just say that. We take these things very carefully and very cautiously. I don't want to say that these should be canonized, because I can't say that for sure. Only God knows. And I, I do believe that when the witnesses come, they're going to straighten a lot of these things out. Because clearly, even the Bible that we have today, and I love and appreciate the gospel that we have, the Bible itself, and the canons that we do have, but we know that Rome tampered with this. And even King James, when he had it translated the King James Version, you know, there still, there was guidelines that were written. This is historical facts. They, the translators were given guidelines and were not allowed to go outside of those guidelines. You see? So there's, there's issues there. But the thing is, is we still have the truth. The question is, is, you know, what little things in there, like, for example, freeing the women... You know, slaves were set free in America, you know, uh, what, over a hundred years ago. But the churches are still trying to keep women in bondage. Well, there's other things as well. If these things are so, then what are the other things? And this is what we're trying to find out. We're searching the Word of God, and we're looking at these books. In fact, some of these books, by the way, the Book of Jubilees, for example, used to be part of the Bible. When Israel was here, part of the Dead Sea Scrolls, also the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch, the first book of Enoch, now it doesn't say that in, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the first book of Enoch was part of the, of the actual Bible, was there wrapped with the rest of the scrolls there as part of the Bible itself. Now the reason why they took the book of Enoch out was because why? The book of Enoch spoke against the eating of meat. It says that the eating of meat was taught by the fallen angels. And, and by the way, I forget, I think it's uh, 150 references from our canon of our Bible references the book of Enoch. Imagine that. So why would we take it out? 
Again, because it condemned the meat part. And by the way, many of the scriptures that we have in the King James that says the word meat is again the word food and not flesh at all. So this is what I mean, we want to know the truth. And this is what we're wanting to share with you guys. You know, the, the few that have tried to condemn us that are out there, that say, well, you're bringing uh, a, a green gospel. You know, I don't know anything about a green gospel. I will say this. God is very much. He said, in fact, I will destroy those who are destroying the earth. And Yeshua, don't forget, Yeshua said in the book of Matthew, in the 12th chapter, I believe it's the 7th verse, if you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. And in the Hebrew Matthew, you would not have bound the guiltless. You see, the animals never did anything wrong. Now, Yeshua, do I believe that Yeshua was a sacrifice for our sins? Yes, he gave his life. That's written in the book of Adam and Eve. It even says, God says to Adam and Eve, and that's another reason why you don't see the book of Adam and Eve, by the way, in our canon either, because why? It condemns sacrifice, it can, or not sacrifice, pure oblation, God always accepted. But it condemned the eating of meat as well, just like the book of Enoch did. It also, God says to Adam, I will come in the form of a man. See, that's what he says. I will come in the form of a man and I will give my life to redeem you. See, and that the Jews didn't like that. So they made sure they took it out of our canon when Yeshua came along or, or their canon. So this is what's happened. So many of these books have been taken out. This should be there. And we're going to go into more of this a little bit later. I hope you bear with me and understand. We love you guys. And if you do believe this way, you, be, you believe that we're trying to do, by God's grace, the right thing, pray for us. And if you'll stand with us, support this ministry. Because the more that we try to tell you what the truth is, the more we show you, like just now in the Greek here, those that are doing the doctrine of devils are the ones that are, that are condemning what God did, what God created, the foods that God created in the beginning. When he said the herbs and the, and the, and the plants and things. And by the way, that's exactly what the churches do today. They condemn you left and right if you speak about a vegetarian diet or living a vegetarian way. And, and some one person also, by the way, they made a comment. They said, you're a hypocrite. You believe in eating eggs. There for a while, I wouldn't touch eggs whatsoever because I was concerned that that may be against the Word of God. That was just my own personal thing, you know. But I also knew that if the rooster's not been with the chicken, which in most egg places there, the, they, don't, they, they keep them separate to begin with. But to begin with, if that be the case, the rooster's not there, there is no potential of life. They must mate together in order to have a life there. But then we found in Job that eggs were something that were permitted to have. So I can only tell you what I can see. We see that God permitted the milk, things like that. Now, he does, he, now again, I will say this though, animal flesh has been permitted, but it's not his perfect will. And that's what we're trying to do, is share with you His perfect will. Our website, IsraelReturns.com or IsraeliNewsLive.org there if you do want to support this ministry. Or go to contacts there on IsraelReturns.com. There are address there. Sister Lisa handles our mail for us in America. Uh, and don't forget, too, we'll be going to Israel very soon here, speaking there with the Orthodox community live and in Israel as well. God bless you. Thank you. And shalom and good evening.